Hi there. Uh, as we've discussed uh, in this video, we will have a look at uh, cases for adjusting entries. We will continue uh, using the same cases that we have discussed in chapter one for table analysis and chapter two, journal entries, All right? Uh, for example, I think we saw this case, the first case from your textbook uh, on October 5th, 2500 amount of supplies is purchased. It is already recorded uh, as we saw in the uh, video clips of chapter two mm, here, right? Uh, supplies is debited because we got there is an inflow of the supplies, which is an asset item, which should be debited. Increase in assets should be debited. But they are, uh, I guess uh, here, we don't have the uh, full explanation, but they are purchased on account. As a result, we, on account meaning we didn't pay cash. So that's liability to our suppliers. So we should increase the liability of which title is accounts payable and increase in liability should be credited, right? So we are continue using, uh, we, con uh, we continue using uh, the same cases. And uh, as a result of this uh, transaction, we found out that on October 31st, what is that? the end of a period, the end of the month. What do we do at the end of the month? We prepare adjusting entries. That's what you are doing. Okay, uh, let's make clear that we are preparing adjusting entries. Okay, and uh, these are headings. Okay. And, And let's uh, write reference number A1, update, uh, 10 fifth. Uh, oh, that's what we did already here, right? What are we doing? Was it just entries are prepared at the, yes, end of the period. So the date should be the end date of October. Again, what's the today? What? <laughs> What's the date of uh, today? It is, yes, it's October 31st. Okay, what happened? You opened your closet, right? You initially purchased 2,500 amount of supplies. You opened your closet and checked out the inventory of your pencils, pen, you know, tapes, stapler, and the like, and paper, right? Books of Xerox copy papers. And then you found out that Oh, we purchased $2,500 amount of supplies and only 10,000, not 10,000, 1,000 of supplies are left. What's happening? Some thief? No, you, it's you, you used up, right? How come? Why did you use it? You used it because you wanted to use your supplies to make what? To make what? To make, yes, money, right? What you did is over the past 20, 20, how many days? 26 days, over the past month, you used your supplies to make money. In a sophisticated term, what did you make? You increased your revenue by how? because you provide the service, right? What are you talking about? The revenue recognition principle over the month, you have provided the service. You satisfy the obligation, right? As a result, you are entitled to recognize the related expense. That's the key you are entitled to recognize related expense. What kind of expense, I guess? 
course, su supplies expense, right? That's what I talk, what I am talking about. Then supplies expense, expense. Where is its normal balance? Expenses are, uh, you remember, asset equals liability plus equity. Expense is one of the equity items, but it is with a negative sign in the middle of the equation itself. Therefore, you regard it as being located at the other side of its location. Therefore, its normal balance is, yes, debit side. So we need to debit it. Good job. So how much? Supplies did you use? How much is gone? Right? How much is vanished? You can see that out of 2,500 initial amount, only 1,000 is left, meaning you have used up 1,500. Right? How did you get that 15? 2,500 minus 1,000. Right? Then, what should be on the credit side? Can you make a guess? What is gone? <laughs> what is vanished? It is the supplies, right? Supplies is an asset. Is shrink has been shrunken, right? You are seeing the reduction of the Supplies. Supplies is an asset is reducing. And should it be debited or credited? Yes, it should be credited by the same amount. Okay. All right. Um, I think it's a good time uh, to talk about some uh, the T account that we've studied in the last class. What's the T account? Uh, it's a educational form of so-called general ledger. And within the T-account, not T-account, can I make a, okay. Yeah, I can do something like this. Now you draw a big T. Hmm. Uh, I I hope you I want you <laughs> to do what I have done uh, and what I'm doing in this Excel spreadsheet because as I told you Excel is very important. Uh, it is highly likely that uh, if you see a uh, search for any job posting uh, for business related uh, positions, then you will see that Excel is one of the essential. Uh, skills, required skills for the position. So please, uh, and Excel is best learned by practicing, okay? So please practice with me the Excel. But uh, so I want you to open the file that we've been using in chapter two and follow what I am doing with me as a practice. But uh, what I'm doing from now on about drawing the T account, you don't have to, yeah, so. Okay, this is for just explanations purpose. So you don't have to follow what I'm doing here, drawing the T account. Okay, T account. How do you draw it? Something like this. Supplies. Okay. Uh, on the uh, line, you uh, write down the title. Okay. And then uh, we saw that uh, supplies was initially recognized here, right? Ten fifth, oh, there is two. Ten fifth. Uh, why is it automatically changing to two? I have a little idea. Ah, it has calculated <laughs> ten over five. Oh my! I can't believe it. Okay, I am changing the format to date. Short date. It should work. Date. Okay. Ten, five. Uh, supplies. Uh, what did we see? We 
it is increasing by 2500, right? And we also, uh, and what we saw in this example was that At the end of the day, on 31st, what was the, set, what was the setting? On August 31st, right? August 31st, how much is left? 1,000 is left, right? Then what does that mean? Your supplies is an asset, initial balance was 2,500, and your ending balance is 1,000. What does that mean? Again, 1500 is used up. Used up meaning it should be credited, right? That's another reason why, why That is another reason why we sh you should have huh, 1500, which is supplies being credited, okay? And then the supplies expense means that you should create a supplies expense account and credit the 1500. Okay, right. Um, and then, uh, but we are not using uh, this form of uh, journal entries, uh, well, uh, journal ledgers, rather we are collecting everything in this uh, table form of journal ledger, right? I will do it later on, okay? So uh, uh, just hold on. Uh, working on the table form of general ledgers yet. Okay, then let's move on to the next topic. What's the next transaction? Prepaid expense insurance. Okay, another cool example. So A2, uh, what's the date? Oh yeah, don't forget it. Today is, no question, it's October 31st, regardless of what's your actual, uh, uh, date. Today is October 31st. Okay. 600 is paid for one year fire insurance policy. Do you have it? Yes, we have it. Where is it? Prepaid insurance, right? Yes. It's what happened on the first day of October. Then what should we do on earth at the end of the month again? Right? Again, what's the uh, journal entry for this transaction, prepaid insurance and cash. You prepaid the insurance. What does that mean? You prepaid, right? So that you don't have to wor be worried about you being insured. When you are being insured, what do you do? You just have fun? No. You want to be insured because you want to be comfortable in making money, in generating revenue, in providing the service so that you are entitled to recognize revenue and at the same time recognize what? The matching principle, expense, yes. It's time to recognize related expense. Then what kind of expense? I cannot hear you. <laughs> what is that? Yes, 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 yes. Insurance expense. How much should it be? Oh, cool. Uh, this is for one year fire insurance policy. You've paid 600. And how many months are we talking about? 
we are talking about at the end of a period. What's the period here? This is the month. That's the month. So you can say that we are talking about insurance expense for one, yes, month, not year. Then 600 is per year, meaning per month it is 50, right? Again, 600 divided by 12, or 600 times one over 12, right, is 50. Huh, cool. Then what should you do? You should do one more thing. And guess what's that? Yes, your prepaid insurance is not 600 anymore. It should be reduced by 50. Then as a prepaid insurance, how do you reduce it? By crediting it, yeah. same as before, right? Your prepaid insurance was originally um, here, right? 600 and you've used up 50 of them. Meaning at the end of the month, your prepaid insurance is becoming 550, right? Uh, that, uh, that is because you are recognizing insurance expense of 50, right? Okay, let's move on. Speed up. For equipment bought at 5,000, depreciation is 40 per month. Okay, A3, A3. Mm, what's the date? I told you the date is end of the month, October 31st. Okay, depreciation, what is that? What is Depreciation on earth. Depreciation means, uh, for example, uh, I have a laptop, okay? Uh, a laptop that I purchased three years ago, paying $1,000. All right, again, I purchased a PC uh, one, uh, three years ago, $1,000. Then what's the value of this PC now? Three years later. Right? Oh, I have a better example. You all have a phone, right? Smartphone, right? Uh, is it um, Apple? Is it um, Samsung? Cool, right? Then uh, how old is your uh, phone? Just one day? <laughs> wow, cool. But some would say that, oh, I bought it two years ago, wow. Then two years ago, how much did you pay? Uh, for my cool uh, Apple iPhone 10, I gave them like $1,100. Cool, then how much is the market price of that iPhone 10 S today? Come on, it is not $1,100 anymore, right? Its market price is now like $400. Sorry, ma'am, but that's what it is, right? Again, initially, two years ago, you paid $1,100. Now, its value is $400. What happened? The asset, the equipment has been depreciated by how much? $1,100 minus $400, which is $700. That's the concept of depreciation. The value of your equipment is reducing. Huh, did you pay cash to reduce the value? <laughs> That's silly, right? You did nothing. There's no cash transaction in it. But 
you need to somehow recognize the reduction in the value. That's the underlying value change in your equipment, even though you did nothing. Right? So that's the reason why you need, you need to recognize, you need to record, uh, record something. Why? Because you've used it. You've used it for what? To make money. You've used it to perform your service, to satisfy your obligation. As a result, you are entitled to recognize revenue and you therefore need to recognize expense. What's the expense? Tell me again. Yes, depreciation. Expense. How much? 40 per month. Then, as usual, when you have debit, you should have credit. What do you think it is? Equipment, right? By that amount, your value of equipment has been reduced. Oh, I, I like your answer. But unfortunately, yeah, the world is not that simple. Oftentimes, unfortunately, it happens, I know. Right? It's not equipment, but the accounting standard states that you should indirectly reduce the value of equipment. If you credit equipment, it means you directly reduce the value of equipment. But rather, accounting standard states that when it comes to these tangible assets that you keep for a long time, the accounting standard state that you should keep its historical acquisition cost meaning don't touch <laughs> the equipment value. Instead, you create a contra equipment account. What's that? Contra equipment account. That reduces, which reduces the value of equipment. Okay. And that contra equipment account is called accumulate. Okay, then uh, let's talk more about the equipment account. Where do you see equipment account in the balance sheet? You have an equipment account, right? How much is it? Equipment, we saw that uh, originally we purchased it at uh, 5,000, right? But we saw that there is a contra equipment account, right? Which reduces the value of the equipment. How much is it? We saw it that the accumulated depreciation is 40. Okay. As a result, the equipment net of the depreciation is becoming 49.60. You get it? Or oh, uh, maybe it is confusing. I will write it uh, in, in a positive number so that I make it clear that you subtract the accumulated depreciation from the historical acquisition cost of the equipment. Okay. All right. Uh, this is the partial balance sheet as of. Uh, October 31st. Then let's talk about your balance sheet as of this time, November 30th, assuming that the depreciation is the same. Then as of the November end, what do you think you will do? You will do the, this adjusting entry once more. You will prepare this adjusting entry once more so 
right? And then how much has been accumulated? How much has been accumulated as this result? Accumulated depreciation is not Uh -oh. It does not look good, right? Accumulated depreciation is uh, what's going on? Not just fifty, right? Accumulated depreciation is once recognized at the end of the October 50 and once more at the end of November, right? So that your total balance of accumulated depreciation is, right, at the end of November, 100. You've accumulated 100 so far, right? So your partial balance sheet becomes from 5,000, you subtract out 100. So that your equipment net is 4,900, right? Meaning as time goes by, you little by little depreciate your laptop, your smartphone, your equipment. So that in the end, the value of the book value of your equipment becomes zero if you keep it, okay? Uh, by the way, this is a topic that you will, we will revisit in chapter 10, right? So please make sure you master this concept of depreciation and accumulate depreciation, okay, here, so that you feel Comfy when it comes to chapter 10, all right? Okay, we've seen three examples. Okay. And let's have a look at one more example. Hmm. A4, uh, on October 1st, a customer paid 1200 for service that will be completed by uh, December 31st. What's that? You receive cash. Uh, uh, by the way, I think we've discussed it, right? We received cash for our future service. What does that mean? Did you, the past tense, did you perform the service? No, this is the cash you received even though you didn't perform your service yet, right? This is the cash that you received for your future service, right? Future as of October 1st. And what's the date today? This is October 31st. This is the future, right? Meaning between, between October 1st and October 31st, 31, 30 days has been passed. Meaning over the past 30 days, you've performed the service, right? You've earned, not unearned, but earned the revenue, right? You earned the revenue, therefore you can erase this debt. Unearned revenue is a debt. It's a liability item. You are entitled to erase your debt. You are entitled to reduce your debt. You are entitled to reduce your liability item. Then how do you reduce on a liability item? By debiting it. You can debit the unknown revenue, right? By how much? How much amount of service did you provide? One month, right? Between October 1st and October 31st. 
you performed one month amount of service when the amount that you received is for how many months? October 1st and December 31st, 10, 11, 12, three months. Out of three months, right? You performed one third of it, right? Meaning out of 1200, you performed one third of it, okay? 1200 divided by three, how much? 400, okay? Again, you earned, therefore, you can recognize the revenue or sales. I told you we uh, use the uh, terms interchangeably, right? Okay, we prepared for uh, journal entries here, uh, adjusting entries here, and we will continue preparing them uh, using uh, uh, next three cases in the next video, right? Stay tuned and see you there.